This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is finding great investment properties at real estate auctions. But before we get started, I just like to say, hey, how are you guys doing? I hope everybody out there is, is doing great. I know that uh, I've talked to a number of you folks out there. It's been a great uh, week uh, just to, with emails and talking on the phone to some of you guys and some of the, the great stuff that's going on out there, some of the investments that you're getting involved with and uh, just uh, some some good good things going on there. So I just want to encourage you. Uh, just keep moving forward here. We have had uh, you know our delays, and uh, in fact, I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. You know, we say we share the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, uh, you know, sometimes we have. I, I don't want to emphasize too much of the ugly because, yeah. Real estate investing is a lot of work and it's, it's, you know, definitely takes your time. You got to be realistic about it. It's not overnight riches like some people promote it. It is something that really does require some work. And in there, uh, if you do your work well, you will definitely reap a harvest. But uh, there are some challenges, and uh, one of those challenges I'm going to share with you today, um, and a lot of you know about this stuff, especially if you're already active investing. But uh, that is the area of property managers. Property managers can make or break your investments, especially if you're an out-of-state investor. And that is one of the tough parts of being an out-of-state investor. I always tell people, hey, if you can invest in your own backyard and uh, there are some good properties there that return the kind of numbers that you need to to be successful in real estate, then I say go for it. In self-managing, yeah, I guess you can do it, you know, a certain degree fairly easily if it's, uh, if their properties are nearby. But, uh, you know, eventually as you build up your portfolio, it might be difficult to be able to manage all those properties. It just depends on the person. I would think that uh, eventually you'd want to be free up to be able to go where you want, when you want, and, uh, do the things that you, you want to do because you've got some great uh, people on the ground that are taking care of things. So property managers um, are, are, and I've talked a, a lot about that in the past, are, are folks that you really want to vet carefully. You want to get good, strong referrals. You want to be able to talk to them extensively. Um, be, make sure you, you know, you've got the right person in mind. So I have this little example here of something that happened that uh, you may have experienced too. And this is one of the tough parts, especially when you're talking single family homes or even small multis, and that is turnaround expenses. Turnaround expenses can be a nightmare. And um, the reason being is because it depends on what your your cash flow is. But if you've got a mortgage on a property and you've got to pay that mortgage and you've got other expenses, of course, in maintaining that property, sometimes you're you're making a small spread. It could be from $100, could be less than 100 but I'd say you wouldn't want to get a property that's less than 100 a month in terms of cash flow. But um, you know, some properties were three or four, maybe even 500 on cash flow. It could be even higher, but uh, it's just that you know, you've got that little spread there. So, um, when you lose a tenant, okay, then it's necessary to come in and turn around that unit. That's what a turnaround is. And if you, for example, if the tenant took good care of everything like they're supposed to. 
the turnaround is relatively inexpensive. Um, sometimes you go in there and all you have to do is clean. Um, but if they've been there a while, uh, maybe they weren't the cleanest or maybe there's some other issues, you might have to go and paint. You know, paint starts getting a little bit expensive if, you know, if it's a multi-room apart apartment or a multi-room house, then um, it starts to add up a little bit. Um, if it has carpet, you either have to clean it sometimes or replace it. Okay, cha-ching, cha-ching. So it starts adding up bit by bit. Uh, if there are things that are broken that have to be fixed and so forth, it uh, starts adding up. Well, I have this uh, property. Uh, I've got a few properties in Memphis, as some of you know, and uh, I've got the second half of a duplex that is in the process of being turned around completely. We turned around the um, one side and it wasn't too bad, but then I got my from my property manager a, a quote on the turnaround for the second side, okay? So this quote comes to a grand total of $4,010 for turnaround, okay? This is insane, okay? This is like, I mean, it's going to take me, you know, three years of uh, cash flow here to pay this thing. I mean, this is crazy. It's just, it's just way, way too high. So what is my option here? I'm going to just pay it and just, you know, you know, just, just, you know, swallow it and say, okay, I'm done. Um, I, I'll worry about making money uh, sometime around uh, 20 22. But, you know, I, I don't want to do that. And at the same time, I, you know, I realized that yeah, it, it, things do cost money. So anyway, to cut, cut a long story short here, what I'm doing is basically going down to Memphis. I'm going to Memphis. Okay. And I am going to do as much of the stuff on this list as I can do. And there's certain things I'm, I'm good at, certain things I'm not so good at. But things like replacing blinds, $165 to replace blinds. I mean, come on. You know, these little vertical blinds you can get at Walmart for $3, $5, um, you know, just to install those things. That's crazy. I can do that kind of stuff. I can, I can do, you know, put new doorknobs in and uh, replace toilet seats and toilet paper holders and, and things like this. And all that stuff just really adds up. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm heading down to, uh, to Memphis. I'm going to do the turnaround and I'm going to save myself close to $3,000 just doing this. And I, uh, I'm, also got a handyman down there that I've worked with in the past, and uh, he's going to come in. He's going to paint at a fraction of their quote to paint. And the only other thing we have is the, the carpet, and I don't think the guy I know is necessarily that great at doing the carpet, so I may have to you know, have, have a, an outside person come in and do that. But right after I finish that, then I'm going to go over to Indy, and I'm going to do some similar things to some of the units there. And what we're doing there is that we're actually getting rid of our carpets. And as we get rid of carpets, we're going to be putting in the vinyl flooring, which um, is makes turnarounds a lot less expensive. Even if the vinyl flooring is damaged, they come in little strips, and you store some extra strips there, and you uh, replace them pretty easily. So um, I am looking at ways to cut my turnaround expenses just so you guys know and uh, that's uh, that's what's going on here it's actually less expensive for me to fly down there and do this myself and then fly over to indy do the same thing and come back and uh, so that's a uh, just an fyi sometimes you gotta fly you know okay well let's get on to our subject here finding great investment properties at real estate auctions so you've decided to get into real estate investing. You're looking at, all I need to do is find some good properties and then boom, I'm on my way. Well, sometimes it's easier said than done. During a seller's market, which it tends to be right now, um, the uh, investment property selections may be limited and uh, may not be as readily available as, uh, as you would like. What you sometimes have to do is find other ways to find good deals. And in a seller's market, a lot of people do direct mail and they do other things, uh, direct to seller to try to find deals and, ne and negotiate with sellers and, and try to get properties that are under market value. 
Um, so there are a number of different ways to find good properties. Um, you know, direct mail is one of them. But uh, another way is to go through auctions. And uh, auctions can be a really, really good way to find some great deals. Now, for those that are dealing uh, in their own state or maybe in their own neighborhood, um, there, there are a few things that you can do to find out about local auctions. Uh, first off, number one, get to know your local bank. Um, homes sold at auction are often foreclosures, and the lender wants to make a quick sale and get a portion of most of their investment back. Depending upon the equity in the home, this means you can sometimes find good deals through these auctions. Take the time to reach out to your local banks and Sometimes the local ones are a little bit better than the big branch, you know, that are national uh, type banks uh, because the local guys are, are, you, are you willing to work a little bit easier with you. The other ones have policies that make it a little bit difficult. So take the time to reach out to local banks. Let them know you're interested in investment properties. They may even let you know when they have a, f a foreclosure available and uh, might uh, let you uh, either bid on it or they may even just say, yeah, if you want to buy it, this is what we're looking at. If you pay that, well, you know, you boom. So that's a good, a good way to get started. You also study local real estate. If you're not familiar with your local market, it will be impossible to really know that, you know, what auction price is good, bad, or otherwise. So one of the elements both buyers and sellers like about auctions is that you don't have to negotiate terms and go back and forth. However, there's also a drawback if you aren't familiar with the, what that home is worth in that uh, and the condition that it's in. Sometimes you're able to inspect them in advance, sometimes you're not. So uh, study your market, see what's out there, take the time to look online at listings and, and get a good feel for what prices uh, homes are going for. Uh, number three, talk to contractors. Auctioned homes are almost always sold as is. That means you need to become familiar with potential problem areas and how much it costs to fix and upgrade the house. For example, if the roof looks as though it's ready to fall in, how much will it cost to replace a new roof? And uh, uh, how about decking and other things like that? Take the time to talk to local contractors and get general estimates. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, take a uh, contractor with you to an auction if, uh, you know, if, if that's possible. Then that'll help you. Also, you can you can take them maybe to drive by the property if you know in advance, and uh, they can give you a good feel for you know what they think might uh, be available. Sometimes you can't always go in there, but uh, at least you can maybe get an idea of costs involved to rehab. Four, learn how auctions work. Now, buying a property in auction is entirely different than going through a realtor. There are two models for auctions. They're either instant or real in real time, or they happen over a few weeks with a minimum bid set, or maybe there's online bids uh, taken. When the bidding gets down to a sing single bidder willing to pay the top price, the auction closes. You'll either need to pay immediately, which means you'll need financing ahead of time. Sometimes you have to go to these auctions with uh, a bunch of uh, checks in your pocket, certified uh, checks um, or, uh, you know, counter checks that you get from from uh, banks that kind of have to estimate what you're going <laughs> to what you're going to spend. It's not always really easy to do. Um, but they'll, and there's also like a, uh, going to be a percentage that you're also going to pay to the auction company as well. Um, so sometimes you can put down a, a percentage of that, but, uh, a lot of times you do have to pay the full price. Uh, number five, figure out after repair value. Again, that's something that would, uh, be really important for you, especially if you're studying the market, you know, what prices are. And uh, you're trying to get a feel for whether or not the, the rehab you, you plan on doing for this property will be uh, able to meet that. Um, and then there's uh, drive by the property. Like I mentioned, uh, most of the time the home is foreclosed and you'll be able to at least be able to um, look inside a window or something. Um, if So if the person ha hasn't paid their mortgage, assume they haven't had the funds to keep up with maintenance and plan for multiple repairs and cosmetic upgrades. However, you can take the time to drive by the property and get a general idea of the condition from the outside. But, you know, you don't always know you know what the pipes look like, or the plumbing or the electrical, but um, you can get a pretty good feel. Finding investment properties, it's a fantastic way to secure investment property quickly and for a lower price than you might otherwise pay by going to auctions. Although there are some specific challenges with buying in an auction, there are also many benefits. 
Um, so I also wanted to say, too, that um, they're, one of the neat thing about auctions is that a lot of them have gone online. And so um, now, you know, you could literally from you know, the convenience of your home, you can bid on homes uh, all over the country if you want um, that it might uh, be able to find a good deal that way. A little bit trickier when you can't drive by it. Auction websites are also a great way for real estate investors and home buyers to efficiently locate and purchase real estate at outstanding prices. Um, just a, sort of an overview of uh, real estate auction websites, just for your reference. And, and uh, there are a number of them out there. Uh, the best uh, online real estate auction sites have built-in marketing platforms to market properties for sale, which helps generate interest, find potential buyers, and quickly sell properties at a good price. If you have a property you want to sell, you might want to consider an online auction. For buyers, uh, of course, which is uh, us real estate investors, real estate auction sites are a great way to quickly search for properties, do initial research, bid on properties at auction, and purchase properties at a very good price. When using an online auction website, be sure to understand the terms of participation, the buyer's premium, terms of sale, disclosures, fees, information regarding inspecting the property prior to the auction, etc. So here are just some of the top sites that you might want to uh, connect with. And some of them have great educational videos and things that teach you all about auctions and uh, what to do, what not to do. Um, here, here are a few of the leading ones. Uh, I, I guess one of the biggest ones is auction.com. Uh, it was launched in 2007, and unlike many other auction sites, it also offers properties that are being auctioned off by third parties, which significantly increases the number of auctions that can be viewed on the website. Some of the pros are it usually, you know, closes, uh, you know, take, closing takes maybe 30 to 45 days. Their auctions are offered nationwide. Auctions included on the website may also be from third-party services, like I mentioned. Um, extensive help for buyers with forum. They also have, uh, I think, chat and other things that you can talk to people uh, to ask more information on. It's very easy to navigate their site. The the down the con side of it, uh, buyers need to be aware of the different fees uh, for real estate auctions. Information for properties by third parties. Another con is uh, information for properties by third parties may not be complete. Number two, Hubzoo um, was founded in 2009 and has locations across the world. This website sells residential properties and land. They also sell homes with traditional sales rather than just online auctions. Uh, some of the pros of Hubzoo. A website displays properties that are for sale via auction and traditional sales, increasing the number of homes you can compare and contrast online. Closing usually about 30 to 45 days. Their auctions are also nationwide. Auctions included on the website may be from third-party services uh, like auction.com. Easy to navigate uh, websites uh, with their FAQs. Um, auctions will note if the reserve price has been met. Uh, some auctions have an end auction now button that allows a bidder to become the instant winner. Uh, some of the cons on that one are, are buyers need to be aware of the different fees, uh, only has residential properties and land listed on the site, and liens are not discovered for the property until the title search process starts. So th that's something you got to be cautious of. Uh, another place, uh, Hudson and Marshall. Okay, that's a website. It's been in business over 50 years and encourages buyers to utilize a real estate agent to help them through the process. Therefore, they are considered agent-friendly in the auction world. They sell residential properties, REO properties that are both residential and commercial and pre-market uh, properties, lender-approved short sales, commercial op auctions, and land auctions. You can actually get uh, apartments on, on that uh, site as well. Uh, closing 30 to 45 days. Are the pro these are the pros. Uh, auctions uh, nationwide. Um, properties are sold with a clear title unless noted in the description, which means that there are no other liens or back taxes on the property, which is good to know about before you start bidding on something. Sellers pay uh, the title insurance. Inventory on the website updates on in real time. Some priorities have a bid now feature, as I mentioned. Uh, properties are noted as reserve or absolute. Reserve means there's a reserve price that must be met for the seller to approve the final bid. Absolute means the property will, will be sold to the highest bidder, no matter the price, on the day of auction. So it gives you a chance to get some real good deals. 
Um, some of the cons, um, buyers need to be aware of the different fees. Uh, as we mentioned, some of the others uh, only shows real estate uh, Hudson and Marshall is auctioning. Another con, not all auctions will end in a bid being accepted. A bid now feature is first come first served and the seller takes bids in the order they come, meaning that a property may be sold before your bid is reviewed. Another Williams and Williams, uh, uh, it's uh, also another good site, prides themselves on being a fourth generation auction house. And as of April 2016, has a little over 100 auctions throughout the nation. The website offers both on location and online auctions with dates when prospective bidders may view the properties. This auction website works with auctions that sell residential, commercial, luxury, land, farms, and ranches. Um, they offer a 30-day closing period. They also have help for buyers and uh, their nationwide inventory on the website is updated in real time. Easy to navigate website. There's a section on financing for buyers who would like to explore financing real estate purchases. Some of the cons, buyers need to be aware of the different fees that they do have for their auctions. Again, it's only Williams & Williams uh, properties being auctioned. Not all auctions will end in a bid being accepted as sellers and auctions with a reserve can take two weeks or longer to decide on the bid offered. Insurable title is included in the average closing cost. So, so those are some of the big ones. There are some other ones I, I mentioned. I think you bid, uh, realtybid.com, um, xom. Um, uh, there's also uh, a great site, U.S. Department of the Treasury Seized Real Property Auctions. Now, this is a great one because it's a government site where they may seize properties, uh, you know, maybe for you know, somebody that was uh, busted for drugs or something of that nature. And uh, these are uh, properties in the U.S. and Puerto Rico include single and multifamily residences, uh, commercial and residential land, commercial buildings and warehouses. Uh, and operating businesses. Uh, these properties have been seized and forfeited due to violations of federal laws enforced by the U.S. Department of Treasury. So, so there are just a, a number of different uh, um, auction sites you can go to, as well as some information on maybe your local auctions as well. So um, I hope that uh, helps you out. Uh, that is it for today. Uh, please note, Old Dog listeners, everything presented here today can be accessed in our show notes on the Old Dogs website at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog. Look for the episode entitled Finding Great Investment Properties at Real Estate Auctions. So until next time, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Thanks again for listening and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.